This video is a demonstration of Dynamics 365 Customer Insights, the Audience Insights component, which allows you to get to that goal we all want, Customer 360, bringing together all of the touch points, all of the interactions, all of the activities with your customers into one unique profile, and then using that in clever ways to predict what might happen next, to segment in a rich way, and to put that in the hands of the systems that your business users use every single day. Let's get into it and I'll show you what it's all about. So here we are in Customer Insights. There are two things going on here. The one I'm focusing on in this demo is called Audience Insights, which is all about unique customer profiles. There is another part going on here called Engagement Insights, which is more about tracking what's going on with your website activity. That's a whole other can of worms. So what we've got here, it's called Dynamics 365 Customer Insights, but you can actually use it completely independently of Dynamics 365, or in fact, independently of any other Microsoft product, if that's that's where you're coming from. And the first thing we do is we select whether we want it to be working on individual customers, a B2C type scenario, or business accounts in a B2B scenario. This stage can't have both, but you can pick either. So you can use it for B2B scenarios as well. I'm going to stick with the individual customers option here because that's the most common scenario where I see it used. And what we're going to do is bring all of those disparate data sources in here. So I'm going to start by going into the data menu and choose data sources. So the first thing we do is we connect up all of those siloed systems. That might be your CRM system. You might have a loyalty system, a point of sale system, an event management system. You might have a data lake with some stuff going on that you can bring across there as well. All sorts of things can come in here. And the idea is that we're unifying they all have to be data sources that have the customer at the center somehow, but we don't have a unique link. We don't have like a customer ID or even accurate um, email addresses to, to link them together. So that's what this is going to do for you. You can use Power Query in here to do data transformation and manipulation if you want to. Again, that's kind of too big for what I want to show you here. I'm going to assume you've got your data in order and we're ready to go. So the process that we go through in Customer Insights here is a unification process that it has the three M's, map, match, merge. So mapping is all about mapping the shape of your data to a structure so that it understands how to bring these things together. And what we've got going on underneath here is called a common data model, which is providing a whole definition of all sorts of different types of data across all different types of sources. So that as you bring these things in, it's using intelligence to do that mapping for you. Now, traditionally with a customer data platform, this would be a massive tedious piece of work. This is where the uh, the magic of AI helps us out. We go in here and we can see that it's already mapped. So you can see it picks up that this is a city, this is an address type of uh, thing, this is a name. And if anything's wrong, this one isn't quite right, that's a first name, you can just go in and cross check and go through and change that. So you've got the ability to let the system do the work for you, but also update anything that isn't quite what you intended it to be. So that's the mapping part. Next, we get to matching. So we've got all of our data sources in there. The system understands the definitions and structures of all the different attributes you've brought in. And now what we want to do is to match those data sources and define how we want the matching to work and how accurate it needs to be. So in the example here, we've got an e-commerce system and a loyalty system, and we're matching those based on a full name and an email address. You can use either or other things, whatever you want. This is a sort of nice example to start with. So let's have a look at how that's put together. Here is my e-commerce system. I'm working on the full name field from e-commerce and I'm matching it with the full name field in the loyalty system. And I am choosing, this is a basic precision score, which basically goes from basic, basic, <laughs> low through to medium, high or exact. Now, depending on your use case and what you're doing, if we're working with matching a full name, we might accept a lower tolerance, a fuzzier type of match. We want to be able to pick up things like maybe first and last name are in the wrong order or misspellings and those kinds of things. Again, your use case, you know, if you're working in financial services and dealing with something as important as that, you're probably going to go for a much higher level of matching. If you're working in a marketing or promotions type sense, then a lower level of matching is less risky and is probably going to be fine. 
but we're combining it here with the email address as well. And so we're putting two parameters together to make that match. So you can choose the level of matching and the things that you want to match on. And then it will come back to you and tell you how that's gone, how many unique profiles has it created. You can actually dig in and have a little bit of a look at the results and tweak that model as you would like until you're happy with it. And then we're up to our third M here, which is the merge process. So this part is essentially just running it in the background. We are going to select which fields we want to appear on the customer profile, which is the output of all of this. And this just, this just runs and we're good to go. And my output of all of that, I'll click back up into the customer section here, is a series of customer profiles. I can go in here and search. Now, we're not typically going to work in this system. This is going to be the engine room of bringing the profiles together but we're going to put this out in the systems where our users are already working. So this is really going to be like an endpoint or a, a source of this data rather than having everyone in your organization come in here. So let's start to put that together. I've now got this unique profile of Abby. I've got a timeline down the middle here, which is showing me all of those activities, everything she's done. We've got her purchases, website reviews, all sorts of things here. And imagine now you can take that timeline, put that in your CRM system. You don't even have to imagine it. That's a reality. That's a thing you can do. So instead of in your CRM system, just having access to the things, the activities and things that the salespeople have done in the CRM, we can bring all this richness so that now the salesperson is getting complete 360 of what's going on or your customer service agent is getting complete 360 of all those activities but more. We've also got these tiles here, which are measures. So we can set up measures in the system. We'll go across into the measures section here and we set up definitions for things. So this could be, you know, the average web purchase, the average store purchase, so some basic calculations that get applied back. We can bring the data sources together though, because lifetime spend is going to collate the purchases from across all of these different systems and have them in there. And they result in those cards that are surfaced up. And those cards can also be used and displayed in your CRM system. Now it's not just your CRM system. You can put that in any kind of, you know, if you're working with power apps and bringing together a custom application, you can put it there. You can surface it in Power BI, all sorts of ways that you can use these things. From there, you can go a step further and start to do some rich segmenting. So if you want to be working with a marketing system, usually you can segment based on the data that's in your marketing system. This now allows you to do segmenting across all of the data sources. So we can say, let's find the highest value online customers. Let's find customers who've spent over a certain amount who also attended that event and are in that loyalty system with this many points. So you can start to build segments across all of these data sources. And now suddenly you've got a very, very rich segmenting experience. And then we push those segments across to your marketing system. Now, if you're working with Dynamics 365 Marketing, native integration, awesome, off you go. If you're working with another marketing system, you can set that up as an export destination and use that as well. We can go a step further with the segmenting though in terms of what we can do here. So for instance, I've got one here that's called a summer promo segment. I can see who's in it and how many people are in there. This is demo data I haven't updated for a while. You would normally see a chart showing change over time of the segment, but find similar customers. So this is now using AI to do segmenting. You've defined the segment, but we can go in here and find similar customers. And that results in something like this here, summer promotion expansion, which is giving us a list of similar customers. So now we're using AI to do our segmenting rather than just our own rules. And you can see all of the customers who've come into here, including a similarity score to give us a degree of confidence with how that's going. So awesome stuff. So now we've got our unique customer profile. We've got those measures and cards and timelines and things. We've built some segments, pushed them across to the marketing system. The other thing we can do here is start to use predictions. Now, if you know how to work with a machine learning model, if you're building Azure machine learning models and so on, you can do that to your heart's content and bring it in here. If you are less expert at that, <laughs> as I am, we've actually now got wizard style prediction models appearing in here customer churn, 
product recommendations, customer lifetime value. And don't feel constrained by the names on these. You can use these in different ways. So for instance, customer lifetime value can be donor lifetime value if you're in a nonprofit scenario. So you can use these on all sorts of different things. Let's have a look at this customer lifetime value as an example here. So this tells you what you need is some kind of transactions. Donations work just as well, sales transactions, whatever it is you want. We get started and this is a nice little wizard that takes us through these things. So we're going to give our model a name here. Next. So then I can put in whatever preferences I want here. I can say I want to predict this over 12 months. There are some other choices I can make. I can just go with the model recommendation so I can choose my intervals and so on in there. Click next. And now it's asking me to add my data. Where is that sales data coming from? So what we need to have in the system is when we brought those activities in, one of those was defined as some kind of sales or sales order line item. So I've got something in here that is the e-commerce purchases, which I'm going to use and we'll tick that and say next. Now it just confirms that we've got all of the right things lined up with the right pieces, which has already been done. And we can add other data in there as well if we want to bring that into the model. I'm just going to go ahead and do the next thing. So then we can boost with additional customer data. So you can start to bring in other things that you might want to use. But I'm again just going to keep it super simple here and work through it. How often do I want to update this? Weekly will be fine. Review, save and run and off it goes. And that will come back and give me a model and an output of what's going on. And then I can go ahead and use that. Now that can then appear in my customer cards. I can use that as part of my segment, all sorts of richness in here. So let's just have a look at what goes on with getting this data out into the systems that your users are already using. We've got a stack of different export destinations here. So these can be Microsoft destinations or other destinations. So these are all the different ways that you can push that output out, put it in your CRM system, use it in your marketing system. The real value of that is putting those predictions and segments and measures and 360 degree views in front of your users, in the hands of your users. Don't give them another system system to log into. They're not coming in here. You're using this as something where you export and make that an output. There is one other final thing in here that I want to mention, which is the idea of enrichment. So you can bring data from sources that are to do with Microsoft. So we've got an interest affinity and a brand affinity in here. This is using Microsoft search data and data from the Microsoft graph to work out, you know, here's a woman in her 40s who lives in uh, Sydney. And so therefore, you know, based on what we know of her demographic profile, she's likely to be interested in um, volunteer opportunities or community service or something like that. We can do that with brands as well. And you can select which brands and which interests are aligned to your industry or your particular use case. You can also bring in enrichment from third party sources. If you're paying for data enrichment type services, then you can bring those in and use that to enrich your profiles as well. So that's it. Customer insights, bringing together your customer 360, using it to make segmenting measures, predictions and getting that in the hands of the users. Lots to love here. I hope that's been helpful.